This is a story that started as the making of a sword, but it was not destined to end that way. But I did not give up, and so the story continued, and this beautiful Damascus dagger was born, through fire, and many hours of patient work. It is quite common that a complex Damascus project starts with many kilos of steel, Damascus packets, and the resulting finished blade weighs much less than one kilo. There are two ways to forge weld steel. The first way, you must ensure that oxygen does not affect the metal, use of a protective atmosphere or a completely cleaned and sealed packet from all sides. Or there is another solution, which you see in this video, you use flux, and at the right moment it removes all impurities, oxides and does not allow oxygen to get in there, which would harm the whole process. When your Damascus billet is forge welded and you shape it extremely, then you will see if it is well forge welded. If yes, then it will last, if not, the layers may open. If such a defect is small, in some cases it can be forged again. This Damascus billet will form the center of the blade. It has a straight pattern in the middle. If part of the material is ground in this way, and then the billet is hammered flat again, a serpent pattern is created. The more layers a Damascus billet has, and the more billets used to make the blade, the greater the risk. Every point that has to be forge welded is a possibility where the project can go wrong, and production will have to be started all over again. A big challenge and a possible problem can also be the fact, that a very large piece of metal has to be heated to the exact temperature. If you are not careful, it can happen that one end burns, and is unusable, and the other end will not be hot enough, and the metal will not be able to weld under pressure. In my forge I use three different sources for heating the metal. I use coke coal the most, it was my first type of furnace, which I still use the most, the furnace is very powerful. The disadvantage is that most of the heat is wasted, but the material is still heated quickly, and especially at high temperatures, you even have to be careful not to burn the steel. In this furnace, it is also possible to melt metals during casting. Another disadvantage is that you cannot see your steel during heating, and you need a lot of experience so that the steel does not burn. Another method is a gas furnace, the advantage is that you can see your steel during heating. The disadvantage is less power than coal, and also a large waste of heat. The third method I use is induction heating. It is a very fast, accurate and effective method. There is no such big waste of energy here, 
you can turn the device on and off at any time. The problem and disadvantage is the high price of the device and the fact that for each shape and size of steel you need a different coil that ensures the transfer of energy to the material. I use each of these methods, each one for a different activity and therefore production is of higher quality, faster and more efficient. Well, here was the turning point in the whole project. In my workshop, there was not a big enough furnace to harden the blade. I had to give someone my trust to do it well. But the result was terrible. After hardening, the blade bent and he tried to solve it by hitting it very hard with a hammer. The result was a cracked blade. All the hours of work I put into this project were suddenly gone. Three, two, one, BAM! Destination fucked! I couldn't throw this blade in the trash. After several months I came back with a new idea and a new mindset. The last third of the blade was undamaged, so I used it to make a Damascus dagger. The story ended happily, although not as I originally wanted. You don't have to give up, just look at things from a different angle, and amazing things can happen. Everything bad comes with something good. My lesson, and at the same time what has been confirmed to me many times, is that if I want things properly, I have to do them myself. The only problem is that it often costs a lot of money for machines and tools. It's even worse when it costs a lot of time to learn a new craft, but then you don't have to depend on someone else. One of the things I also had to start doing is metal casting. Be sure to ask about specific production steps that interest you. It is not possible to talk about everything in the video, but I will be happy to answer you if I can. Once again, thank you very much for watching the whole video. Let me know in the comments if it helped you or if you learned something. It's great that you share it on social networks. Thank you for the like and thank you very much to everyone who decided to become a member of my channel, because even if it costs you almost nothing, it will help me a lot.